Welcome to Man in America. I'm your host, Seth Holhouse. More and more Americans are fleeing the United States every year. But it's not what you think. I'm not talking about flying across oceans or driving across borders, although these things are happening too. You see, what many folks have discovered is that that little piece of paper you get right after you're born, you know, your birth certificate, well, it may not actually be your registration as a citizen of the United States, the country, but instead your registration as a citizen, or more accurately, an asset, of the United States, the corporation, a privately held, foreign-owned company. And as the heads of this company become more and more despotic with each passing day, thousands of Americans are renouncing their their corporate citizenship and becoming state nationals, sovereign citizens of their own home states. Some are even calling this an exodus as they free themselves from the bonds of debt slavery of our masters, under our masters in Washington, D.C. and London and the Vatican, to returning to the America that our founding fathers intended, a free people under God. Joining me today is Ann Vandersteel, host of Steel Truth and co-chair of the late Zev Zelenko's Freedom Foundation and former, and former citizen of the United States Corporation. So she's going to explain to us exactly how this whole country versus corporation thing works and how we even got here in the first place. Plus, she'll tell us exactly how she renounced her U.S. citizenship, what it means for her personally, financially, and spiritually, and how you can do it too if that's what your conscience demands. But before we get started, today's show is brought to you by Rise TV. With all the big tech censorship and the demonetization going on right now, the subscribers at Rise TV are literally the reason I can bring you this critical information today. Over at Rise, our mission is to uncover the truth, no matter how dark and difficult, while always holding on to hope and even having a few laughs along the way. We've got an amazing community of patriots. We've got a massive content library, and you get to hang out with myself and Ann today for the second hour of the show where you can ask your questions and share your thoughts and ideas. And today, I'm going to be covering some crazy stuff that I can't even talk about on the public platforms. But look, if you're not ready to join Rise TV yet, I completely understand. Times are tough. And that's why you can always watch my show on all major video and podcast platforms. For as long as there's breath in my lungs, I'll bring you this critical information for free because this is how I'm fighting the information war. But if you do want to support me and get access to exclusive Man in America content, the best way is to come try out Rise TV. There's a link for a free trial in the description below. You can also there find all the links to my podcast and other video platforms and social media. And folks, by now we all realize that we're in for a bumpy ride for the foreseeable future. Russia and China are truly flexing their muscles on the world stage, and they've aligned with India, Brazil, South Africa, and dozens of other countries to transition away from the U.S. dollar as the dominant global currency. So what does this mean? I mean, for most of us Americans, the U.S. dollar is all we know, right? All of our hard-earned money is completely tied to it, whether it's through the stock market, our bank accounts, pensions, 401ks, etc., But you see, the rest of the world is fed up with the U.S. printing money out of thin air and demanding to trade it for things of real value. So this is why Russia has already backed its currency with gold and many other nations are expected to follow. But what happens if the dollar loses its global reserve status? The value of our dollars, our life savings could be wiped out overnight. And look, I'm not a financial advisor, so please do your own research. But I do believe that now, more than ever, it's a good time to consider transferring at least some of your wealth into physical gold and silver, real-world assets that have stood the test of time. And for this, I'm confident recommending Noble Gold. You can buy gold and silver directly, or you can even transfer your IRA into physical gold and silver with zero taxes and penalties. And most importantly, you can trust Noble Gold with your wealth. They have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and hundreds of positive reviews from the folks like you that they've helped out. Now look, I want to be really, really clear with you. You don't buy gold and silver to get rich. You do it to protect your wealth. But if things get really tough, history has left us many stories of folks scooping up land and other valuable assets for a few gold coins. So now's the time, folks. If you want to learn more about this, open up a new tab right now and go to goldwithseth.com. Or you can call 877-646-5347 to speak to someone right now. The folks at Noble Gold will answer all your questions and take care of you every step of the way. Again, that's 877-646-5347 or goldwithseth.com. All right, folks, I want to give you a quick disclaimer before we start this show. 
Nothing that we discuss here is legal advice to you. Please do your own research. This is a complex topic, and we're just giving you our understanding of it. We're not legal experts, so please, please do your own research. Don't go to court and get in trouble and say, well, man in America sent me. This is all his fault, okay? It's all your responsibility, but I do hope in saying that that this information is extremely helpful for you because as you saw with the raid of Mar-a-Lago yesterday from the FBI, these are some crazy times and we're experiencing a government that is truly going tyrannical. So we have to look at every aspect of how to protect ourselves from that. So without further ado, let me go and bring on my guest today, Miss Anne Vandersteel. And thank you so very much for joining me today. Oh, Seth, thank you so much for having me. It's a privilege and an honor to join you. You have a beautiful and wonderful podcast and uh, you and your lovely wife do a phenomenal job of putting incredible content. And I had the pleasure of seeing you speak at the last Health and Freedom Conference and I was beyond impressed, beyond impressed. So it's a pleasure to see you into the new media cadre and uh, call you colleague. Oh, thank you so much. I remember when we were first getting started and we discovered your channel and my wife was like, this lady's really got it. She's really, really professional. We got to learn from her. So it, it is an honor to have met you in person many times and also to have you on the show. Now, you know, speaking of the last Health and Freedom Conference, that's when you, know, you and I were chatting backstage and you started talking to me about the whole idea of becoming a state national. And I had heard about this before and it really piqued my interest. And I said, you know what? I got to have you on the show because we have to talk about this. But before yeah. we dive into the, the details of that, Maybe some people have heard or they're, they're well-researched. They haven't even heard about it all. The whole concept of America or the United States as a corporation, which I remember when I first heard that, it was a really strange thing to hear. It's like, what do you mean that United States is a corporation, let alone one that's owned by foreign entities? So can you just give us a little bit of historical background of how we got here, what happened with the Civil War, 1871, et cetera? Sure. Well, really, Seth, um, I mean, I think I just got off the air. Frankly, I was interviewing Judge Napolitano on the Zelenko Report. It's a new show we've just launched in tandem with the foundation, the Zelenko Freedom Foundation. And we were having this very discussion about, you know, freedom. Are we really free at this point? And I think what we witnessed last night was we have an overreaching, tyrannical government, but one that is not chartered by we the people. I mean, these agencies, the FBI, as I call the FBI, was never chartered by Congress which is we the people, or in our constitution, same with the Department of Injustice, same with the CIA, same with the DOD, and on and on and on. Department of Education, Department of Energy, you could list all of them. Only 19 entities were ever chartered. And uh, you know, our military is, is makes up multiples of those 19 entities. So frankly, we have a lot to atone for which we need to take responsibility, Seth, about what we've allowed our country to become. So after the Revolutionary War, what, what essentially happened, I'm going to sort of give a higher overarching viewpoint of this, and I apologize, we have a thunderstorm going on outside in case it gets a little wonky. But the British quickly realized um, that the Americans, the revolutionaries, had adapted to war, and they were no longer going to line up very, you know, uh, civil and shoot at one another in opposing lines because that was clearly a death sentence. They learned to fight like Indians, to which they had uh, been bat battling in some areas of the new world over here. And so they decided to start fighting like that. And the, the British realized very quickly that they were losing at that game. So they got very crafty. And as you know, their titles of nobility and their esquires and their squires, which is where the British accredited registry system is from, the bar, which is your esquire, your attorneys and lawyers, they're pretty smart and they're very, they're very, they're very um, cagey with their language. So they learned how to basically start stealing the comp the uh, the the um, country back, the new world back, and to keep it under the domain of the British crown. It was very important that they not lose the territory over here because we know the United States is so rich in wealth from uh, oil and gas and minerals, and of course our people the intellectual property that we turn out every year that the CCP has stolen ad nauseum year after year after year. So they recognized the jewel and what they had, and they started manipulating the language. And they had people inside our country that were working for the crown, not too dissimilar to the Steele dossier and the people that were traitors to our country working with the British again to set up President Donald Trump. So this has been a battle that's been going on historically since the beginning of the founding of our country. Uh, that being said, the Civil War happened, and in 1868, at the end of the Civil War, uh, in order to 
be admitted, readmitted back into the union of states. Remember, we were not a nation state with a centralized government. We were a union of states with each state having its own sovereignty, its own constitution. Uh, the the uh, states were asked to ratify the 14th Amendment, which in summary basically gave you uh, citizenship and the, the quotes, right to vote. Well, at that, up until that point, Seth, we were all electors. And if you owned property, your elector, uh, your electoral count was worth four. And somebody who was um, not an elector, they had no vote at all. So you had to be a landowner to actually vote in the country at that time. Also meaning if, if you were a slave, you couldn't vote. That's true. That's true. Um, if you look at it from the context of we were, we were all sovereign uh, state citizens, meaning we were state nationals. I, if I, if I was part of uh, Ohio or New Jersey at the time or Connecticut, that was where my, my, my nationality was residing because we were all nation states. And then we came together as a union and we decided to form a federal government to basically defend the, you know, be, you know, oversee the common defenses of all of us in case we were ever invaded by a foreign enemy again. So that was the whole genesis of, of the federal government. Well, in 1868, the federal government said, if you want to be if you want to be admitted to the union, you have to ratify the 14th Amendment. And the 14th Amendment essentially gave away state sovereignty, meaning that you now became part uh, citizens of the United States, no longer a citizen of your state. And so New Jersey and Ohio actually really uh, rebuffed this first pass. They didn't want any part of it because they knew what that meant. They knew giving up state sovereignty would ultimately be the death of the citizens of their states. And we would lose the control of what we had with our own executive, legislative, and judicial branches that were governing every state to that point. But they were threatened. And if they didn't do this, they would not be readmitted to the union. So under duress, New Jersey and Ohio complied. And the 14th Amendment was so-called ratified. Well, that ratification process, and you can call it not legitimate, you can call it fraud because it was under duress, um, basically made everybody lose their state sovereignty and become a United States citizen. 1871, three years later, they did a dirty again. They actually incorporated the 10 square miles of Washington, D.C., which was set aside as a district of Columbia to be that governing body to protect all the states that had come together into union. So through semantics and through a little, uh, I don't want to call it black magic, but just through a little, uh, Probably so. you know, cloak and dagger, right. They, uh, they actually stole your sovereignty and stole your essential freedom. They took your God given rights that your state constitutional powers were protecting and that our U S constitution enumerates in the bill of rights. And they exchanged them for government privileges. And those government privileges would become enumerated as we march through time into the early 19th century with social security. And of course, the most heinous of all the federal reserve act, which is what is creating this fiat currency, and uh, you were talking about it earlier on the open. So that's essentially the, the genesis of what happened right there. And that foreign corporation is what allows, because corporations are governed by bylaws and statutes and codes and not constitutional law of the land, of which we the people are governed by the constitutional law of the land, the highest court in the country. You as a U.S. citizen are now a municipal servant and you are part of that corporation. So by giving your by signing up and getting a social security card and getting a birth certificate, you are through a tacit agreement, even though you were unknowing at the time because you were a baby and your parents didn't understand what they were doing, you became a corporate slave to the United States Incorporation. You know, it's actually a good point for me to read this actually. So I printed this off from the documents you gave me. You gave me a wealth of information to review. And this right. was this was very interesting. So this was a quote from the White House, a well-known aide, uh, Colonel Edward Mandel, and this is from the 1920s. So I thought that this really, from the perspective of the bad guys describing their plan, this sums things up really well. So I'm going to read this paragraph really quick. It says, "Very soon, every American." Now, keep in mind, this is in the 20s. This was written. So for the listeners, like you know, close your eyes and imagine hearing this in the 1920s and how prophetic this is. Very soon, every American will be required to register their biological property in a national system designed to keep track of the people that will operate under the ancient system of pledging. By such methodology, we can compel people to submit to our agenda, which will affect our society as a chargeback for our fiat currency. Every American will be forced to register or suffer not being able to work and earn a living. They will be our chattels and will be and will hold the security interests over them forever. 
by operation of the law merchant under the scheme of secured transactions. Americans, by unknowingly or unwittingly delivering the bills of lading, birth certificates, to us, will be rendered bankrupt and insolvent, secured by their pledges. They will be stripped of their rights and given a commercial value designed to make us a profit, and they will be none the wiser, for not one man in a million could ever figure out our plans. And if by accident one or two should figure it out, we have in our arsenal plausible deniability. After all, this is the only logical way to fund a government by floating liens and debts to the registrants in the form of benefits and privileges. This will inevitably reap us huge profits beyond our wildest expectations and leave every American a contributor to this fraud, which we will call social insurance. Without realizing it, every American will unknowingly be our servant, however, begrudgingly. The people will become helpless and without any hope for their redemption, and we will enjoy the high office presidency of our dummy corporation, USA, to foment this plot against America. Uh, Seth, I mean, it's a hundred years of prophecy, isn't it? Because we've watched through the slow march of time exactly how they've done it. Back in the day, in the 1700s, 1800s, there was no such thing as, um, you know, getting a social security number. That was a fabrication that, as you just explained and what you just read, so they could commoditize us, turn us into tradable bombs. And essentially what happens with your social security number is when you're born and you're issued that social security number because your parents don't know that they're turning you into chattel for the corporation of the United States of America or U.S. Inc. or um, United States Inc., however they want to define it. They have multiple names for this corporation. Um, and they bankrupted them too along the way and started new ones. Now, now it's the White House Inc. under the current regime. But um, what they've done is they've commoditized you. So in other words, here's a real life example. And I'm sure anybody watching your broadcast right now has been pulled over by the police and been issued a speeding ticket at some point in their life or they went through a divorce, or they were in a car accident, something that triggered a case. They were sued, but you have a case number and you're in court, okay? So part of being a free people is reclaiming dominion and jurisdiction over the land, the air, and the water, just as described in Genesis, right? God gave us dominion over the earth, uh, the land, the air, and the water. That's your law. We as free people stand on the court of the land, the highest court in the country, we stand under God's law, common law, right here, okay? As a free living woman, this is where I stand. Commerce is done in the admiralty court. Think back to when our, you have to think back, like you said, using the diction of the past. It's why we recommend people picking up a copy of the sixth edition of Black's Law Dictionary so that you can understand what they actually meant when they were writing the original founding, our documents back then, So and, and the laws back then, how they were codified. But commercial law is conducted in admiralty courts. Ships were doing commerce across the water all the time. That's how we did trade. Admiralty law, admiralty courts. If you are a commercial vehicle or entity, you're doing law in the commercial court, your Article I court. The Article Three courts, like the Supreme Court, are the common law court, highest court of the land. And frankly, free people should be doing all of their transactions in an Article Three court, for which we are never given the opportunity to do. Yet we can facilitate and take control of the court and turn it into an Article Three court if we know how to do that. Um, I find it really interesting that when you, when you are engaging with the law and you find yourself in a case situation where you're in a court, they have now commoditized that case number. They turned your case number for your speeding ticket, for example, into a QSIP number. That QSIP becomes an IBIN number and the IBIN turns into a bond. And really what the courts are doing now is they're commoditizing everything and uh, invoicing everything. And they're hitting your trust that was started when your, you were issued your social security number, then your driver's license number, your passport number, anything that has a reference number to you gets bonded and commoditized. And you can actually look this stuff up, Seth, and you can see just how many times you, your entity, your vessel if you will, not the real you, but the vessel they created, your social security, which is a fictional entity. It's the straw man of you. You can go on a website and see how many times you've been traded. It's quite astonishing. Really? What's the website? G-M-E-I-Utility.com. G-M-E-I-Utility.com. And do you do you do you put in your social security number or how do you? Yeah, check? But in your social security number, um, I, I'm I'm even going to pull it up right now because I I haven't looked at mine in a while. But Actually, uh, you know, Kate's Kate's pulling my up. I think we'll, we'll org. Show. I'm sorry. Tell Kate it's dot org. My bad. Oh, dot org. Okay. Dot org. Yeah. 
And so you can see, you know, I mean, look, look at what happened in 2008. We saw people that were, right. you know, had these mortgages, they're repackaging, reselling, borrowing against them. So are you telling me that, that basically that the corporation of the United States is treating us as the citizens based upon our birth certificates as a commodity to be traded? Correct. That's correct. They're monetizing us. Here's an example. I just got back from meeting with David Strait and Bobby Lawrence, who are two gentlemen and their wives, Bonnie and Tia, wonderful Americans who have been you know, teaching people about how to truly be free, teaching people history. And believe it or not, Seth, this is all based on the Bible. It, it goes hand in hand with the Bible, which really is the law of the land if you want to get right down to it. Okay. But uh, what I learned is in a for example is in the state of Texas, you have about 20 or I think 22 million registered driver's licenses. Well, each time somebody gets a driver's license in Texas, the state of Texas corporation, all states have their own corporation, all caps, state of Texas corporation, takes out a bond on that particular driver's license. Okay. That bond is worth $10,000 every year that that driver's license is in existence and for every new driver's license that comes on. Now imagine that times 22 million people in the state of Texas with driver's license. How much money is just in that one bond? That is one bond. So now you see how much money, if you start to think about not only the driver's license bureaus in, in one state, but you multiply it by 50 states and you look at all the different ways they can commoditize, it is beyond scandalous that this money has been available, but that we are not made privy to it. And in the way that uh, the Constitution has been drafted for each state, including the one for the United States for America, how it should be said, um, that is a trust indenture document where God is the executor of the trust. Uh, our, our public servants, if you will, the ones that are supposed to be de jour, real, of the people, by the people, for the people, public servants, are actually the trustees. And we, the people, are the beneficiaries of that trust. So what has happened is they hijacked that relationship between God, the, the true uh, du jour um, public servants that are working for the people, not for the corporations. And they've hijacked it over to where you have, of course, the fake de facto uh, corporate congressmen and senators, not only at the federal level, but at the state level. And the mafia is now the beneficiary, the cabal. They have been commoditizing us and raiding these bonds left and right. So when you go into court, and you are given a public defender for whatever egregious crime you may or may not have committed, specifically speeding, which if there's been nobody injured, there's no injured party, how can there be a crime? You're, you know, you're breaking their policy, but if you're not part of their policy because you don't stand in their jurisdiction anymore because you're on the land and you're not in their admiralty jurisdiction, there is no crime. So there's, it's, there's a lot to learn with this juris and diction. But people really need to stop and think about things. They need to start asking themselves questions when they're looking at real estate. Is the town incorporated? Is the county incorporated? What's the difference? Why, why not? Well, taxes will always tell you one is going to be more than the other. But why? Do these corporate corporate counties, do the commissioners, are they job holders? Do they swear an oath to the Constitution? Can they show you their sworn affidavit that has been notarized? If they can't, that's a felony. These are all things that people really have not been educated on, and they've got to start waking up to all of this set. The key is why? Because we the people are the government. And frankly, right now, we are getting a really hot and heavy dose, a hot mess, if you will, of what's going on in this country. And President Trump, and I, I, I know he probably wouldn't like it when I said this, but think of Jesus Christ who bled on the cross for our sins and died. President Trump has taken slings and arrows for we the people. And he told us in 2017, he was going to restore this country back to its rightful rulers, the people. And the deep state wants no part of that at all. Because as soon as we're free and you're, you become outside their jurisdiction and you take yourself out of the corporation and out of all the amendments that that corporation has started, you now are in big trouble because the deep state can't collect funds off you anymore. You can claim your bond, you can claim your trust, and you certainly are not going to be contributing to the hot mess of the IRS, another foreign entity that is funding the International Monetary Fund and World Bank, not the Treasury. Exactly. And so I had the website where I'll pull this up briefly again. I was going to do it live, but I realized that it involves me putting my social security number, in it, which is probably not a good idea on a public probably platform. Not. But anyway, so gmeiutility.org, this is where folks can go. 
and yeah. look up how much you've been traded as an entity, which I'll be doing right after this show. It's, you know, when, when you're, you're speaking, something really comes to mind, especially as you start getting into the deep state and the cabal. And, and what we see over and over again is there's a principle with how they do things that there still has to be free will, right? They can't, you know, we're, we're not, though we feel like we're born into a slavery system, we're not born with the shackle on our ankle. It's, it's through the delusion and the lies that we, in a lot of ways, we submit to it without even knowing, but through understanding it, we still have the decision, the choice to leave their system. And so that's, and that's where we are today. So you've actually walked through this process. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, and again, just to remind folks that, you know, please do your own research on this because this is, you know, it's, to me, it feels like it's a not, maybe not risky territory, but potentially risky territory, especially as we get into the tax discussion and everything like that, which, um, so just for folks who are watching, we're going to wait till we're over on Rise TV after the first hour of the show. And that's where we're going to really get heavily into like how it affects taxes. And I mean, you even talked about how you've submitted to have all of your taxes ever taken from you paid back to you, which is mm-hmm. mind boggling to me. So we're going to get into that discussion on Rise TV. And if you want to join us, just a reminder, there's a link for a free trial in the description below. But so can you just walk us through what it means to become a state sovereign or a, a state national, a sovereign? Okay. You know, yeah. Sovereign and citizen is an oxymoron, so you have to be careful. And again, there's a lot of diction, a lot of language you've got to get accustomed to saying. For instance, um, if I'm going to uh, travel in my personal automobile because I'm not doing commerce, I don't need to be registered with the state of Florida to have a driver's Mm -hmm. license nor to register my vehicle because I own it. Um, So there's things like that that you will learn and they they become uh, second nature to the language that you're speaking because you understand where you actually stand. You have now claimed dominion and you've corrected your status and you have put yourself right back in common law on the law of the land, which is beautiful. It's God's law, which is how nature intended us to be, how God intended us to be. So in order to start the process, you've got to, uh, first of all, decide you want to do this. You've got to do a little research and a little reading. And I provided you with a historical document, an affidavit of truth, that was a fictional version of of, of a person, but the in fact, the, the story itself of the entire affidavit was true. It's a historical look at why, and I, I summarized it briefly in the beginning, but why we are where we are and why someone would want to leave the corporate citizenship of the United States. So you now make a decision that you want to first um, assert your affidavit of truth, where you will literally fill out an affidavit of who you are and why you have found grievances similar to our Declaration of Independence. Liken it to that similar document of the founding fathers. They listed numerous grievances, why they were leaving the crown and wanted to stand uh, with, uh, you know, as, as, you know, perform a revolution and leave the crown and stand up their own nation states here across the pond, the 13 colonies. They wanted their independence. Well, because of the same reasons that we see ourselves today. We have tyrannical government overreach. We have taxation without representation. We have wars without representation. We have bioweapons without representation. They have declared war on us and they have been for quite some time. And they've been robbing us blind and commoditizing us and telling us that this is how it is and it's supposed to be great. And oh, if you save your money in a 401k tax-free, we won't tax you until you start pulling it out. Well, it's it's more of the same, Seth. We never were truly free. And you know, when I when you pay off your house and you have no more mortgage, but you don't pay your property taxes, they'll still take your house. So you were never really owned it. I want to own everything that my blood, sweat, and tears and my family's put into, and I want to own it free and clear because it is mine. So in declaring my uh, affidavit of truth and my repudiation of my 14th Amendment U.S. corporate citizenship, I fill out paperwork. Um, I get it notarized. In addition to that, I also performed a a search in my past. I went back and I looked through my patent of nativity. I wanted to determine, was my DNA on this soil prior to 1776 to make me a true American when we declared our independence? I happened to find out in that journey that yes, I I was, my mother's side of the family. And not only was I uh, here before 1776, but I'm a daughter of the American Revolution. I had a great, great, great grandfather who fought for my mother's side. So a lot of unique things I learned along this journey. But I submitted this paperwork to five places, the president of the United States, the attorney general, the secretary of state of the United States, all at the federal level. And I also submitted it to two other states, uh, uh, Department of State, the secretary of states in the state in which I was born, New Jersey, as well as the state in which I reside. 
And I sent this declaration, an affidavit of truth, and my repudiation of my 14th citizenship to all these folks, registered return receipt, so that when they received those documents, all sworn and notarized, I would get a postmark stamped green return receipt card the day it was received. From that point forward, you wait 21 days. And when all five cards got mailed back to me and I waited 21 days from the last date, I could then file us what's called a summary judgment where I took those green cards and I had a notary notarize that in addition to my original freedom bundle that I sent off. And I went and took it to a courthouse, the clerk of the court, and I filed it as a summary judgment to record that I myself have declared my freedom. I've notified everybody. I'm not part of their corporate system anymore. They have not rebutted anything. These are all unrebutted affidavits. And I am now recording that process in the court. And from there, I am considered an American state national. That's when I took the next step. And this is the big one because this is where the rubber meets the road. Once you've recorded it in the court, you can then go and set up an appointment at the U.S. Passport Agency. And I have a, a, a passport book as well. I've got a card and a book. And you can take your recorded documents and you can fill out a brand new DS-11 form. That's the passport form, Seth, that's put out by the government that you can fill out and you can tell them, I am no longer a U.S. citizen. Here is my freedom bundle, all sworn affidavits, uh, unrebutted, summary judgment, recorded in court. I'd like you to change and correct my status. And guess what? I got my passport back, United States passport issued by the United States government because I live here in America in Florida as a Florida state national. And I'm recognized as such now. When you went to the passport office to do that, was it something that they'd never seen before? And they were, did they argue at all? Or is it, is it somewhat common? Well, you know, Seth, I, not, not to pat myself on the back, but I'm a little special. The Department of Homeland Security, <laughs> another, uh, another unconstitutional form of terrorism in this country that's doing nothing to secure our borders at all, as we all know, has targeted me going back to... May of 2021, I'm now on the TSA's watch list. I'm considered a domestic terrorist. Uh, they ran, they decided to revoke my TSA pre-check status a year and a half ago. They revoked my clear status. And uh, when I travel, I'm un, I'm summarily just um, to the point of, you know, patted down very invasively. All my luggage is rifled through. Most of the time, if I check luggage, it doesn't get to the destination on time. I've missed flights. It's pretty unbelievable what they'll put me through at this point all to slow me down, all to stop me from talking about things like this, and just, of course, reporting the news. That being said, um, the passport agency knew who I was because my husband and I both went the same day to get same-day turnaround service. We paid extra for it, a significant fee, in fact. He got his the same day, but I didn't. And they said, well, your name is uh, being reviewed in Washington, D.C., which I wasn't surprised. I did end up getting it a week later, and I was fine with that. I just wanted them to get it done. So... They tried to stop me. They tried to hassle me. And from this point forward, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo was when I submitted to get my passport. The government technically has 180 days to which they can, quote, correct all their systems, of which we know there's plenty of bureaucracy across the federal government to reflect the current change in my status. So at this point, I'm still getting hassled by the TSA because they refuse to acknowledge it. But their day is coming. November 5th is around the corner. And I look forward to the day when they scan this card and it comes back and says that I'm an American state national, which in a sense is like almost like diplomatic immunity. They will not be able to detain uh, nor, you know, nor ask questions. They can't detain or uh, so illegally search and seize like they've been doing to me for quite some time. So with this process, you've basically, you've renounced your federal citizenship. You're, the, the, you know, as, as a citizen of the United States, you know, the corporation of the United States. So, but you know, with that comes your social security number, you know, but your social security number is what you need to get a mortgage, your credit rating, um, you know, even, you know, a marriage, uh, you know, it's probably kind of. Why would like you that. want to contract with the state? Do, 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 do you and your wife feel like you needed to let the state know that you got married? Does your love need their approval? Well, she's an immigrant from Australia. So <laughs> there's, it was a little more complicated for that reason, but no, absolutely not. For all the reasons why, because you're working inside the corporate charter. Mm. Um, a marriage is between a man and a woman and God. Your contract is your vow with God. That's where it starts. And that's the fundamental shift in the way we think about things, Seth, that needs to be reviewed. You know, I, I, I hate to make this symbol because people will obviously miss oh, They're going to screenshot it and they're going to say that they're going to screenshot it. But the point <laughs> is, you have God at the top 
You have uh, the government, which is supposed to be the trustee, and we, the people, are supposed to be the beneficiary. That is the trinity of trust right there. That was how this nation was founded, not this unholy alliance run by a bunch of you know corporate thugs, to put it nicely, that is robbing us blind. And the fact that people believe you have to have a contract with the state to get married, um, Social Security is a contract because you did sign paperwork. Your parents gave you a card. You filled out your uh, S. Uh, what is it? The S S S ninety form S ninety one form for Social Security. Sorry, my brain just went flat on the number, but that's a contract. So if you have paid into it and you're worried about giving up the Social Security in which you paid into, um, don't worry about it because they are contractually obligated to pay you. That is your money that you gave them under a contract. They have to perform. So that money is still accessible. And I know state nationals today who are of the retirement age that are still drawing their social security number and yet they're not paying taxes into the system anymore. Does it affect your credit? You know, what happens, let's just say right now you wanted to go buy a new car and they wanted to run run a credit check and all that. How does it affect that process? Well, that's an interesting question because I recently wanted to see if my credit rating was impacted. So I went on E-Verify and I put in my social security number. And what I found quite intriguing was that E-Verify, including Experian, could not verify me anymore. So this is where it will get interesting. And as I heard you talk about, you know, lauding the uh, importance of protecting your wealth in gold and silver, that's in fact exactly what I've done. I've taken what I've accumulated in my lifetime. And I've put it into metal because I believe that is the only sound money we have. In fact, our constitution dictated that back in the beginning of time, right, Seth? We were supposed to only use uh, gold and silver for legal tender. Yeah, so, thanks, Nixon. That, exactly. Thanks, Nixon. But knowing that this is all coming to an end, we can see the writing on the wall. We see the other nations around the world starting to back their currency by gold, like Moscow, excuse me, like Putin, like Russia. This is going to come here because the unraveling of the fiat currency is happening. How do I know it's happening? I'm watching banks not release funds right now. I can't move money from certain accounts unless it's a certain size increment. They're really tightening right now. I don't know why they do that. They just keep printing more, right? I mean, what's the problem? So one way to get around this, of course, is as you go transition into a new system, and it's like giving birth. It's not pretty and it's not pain-free. So with good change, with pain, or with gain comes some pain sometimes. So think of yourself on a diet trying to get ripped and ready for the next uh, fitness competition. I put my money into gold and silver, and I can actually, in the depository in which it's housed, I can take loans out against my deposit balance. So let's just say I have $100 in there of gold and silver. I can get a loan to value of 75 of those $100 in money if I need it to use for whatever. I want to buy a house or a car or what have you. So in the transition, there's going to be bumps in the road, but Seth, that's to be expected. Nothing is just going to be, oh, we just pay off bills and it's it's all you know unicorn money. That's that's what they're doing right now, and they're telling you it's real. We're in for a rude awakening, like you said, when they decide that the U.S. dollar is no longer the the world's reserve currency. It'll be as good as the toilet paper in your uh, in your bathroom at that point. Yeah, I mean, we we can look to Venezuela. I, mean, I, I had heard a story. I think it was in the Germany or Weimar Republic after their currency collapsed. And there's a story that someone was out shopping and they had a whole basket full of cash of, of their, their, you know, the reserve notes or whatever that they're using as their yep. currency. And they had left it on the street on accident. They came back, the money was sitting on the street and someone had taken the basket. Like that was <laughs> the value. That was the value of that currency. So it's true. What has this been like for you spiritually, like this process of, cause I, I, it's almost like I'm talking to you. It's like someone that you're talking to like, Oh, I have this new diet pill. It's working so well. It's transformed my life. Only this is so much deeper and just, it's almost at a soul level, like this change mm-hmm. and I'm seeing it in you. So what has this process been like for you? Seth, it has been the most liberating process I can ever describe. Um, we've all been in a bad relationship or you had somebody that was just absolutely abusive, or they were just unpleasant to be around, or you knew somebody, maybe you weren't dating them, or they maybe weren't a family member, but you knew of a person that you had to interact with, a coworker, someone in school, whatever. There's always been that interaction with somebody in your life that was just unbearable. And as soon as you were free of whatever that was, you blossomed and you're like, oh my God, I'm just so glad I don't have to be around that person anymore. Well, this is what it's like. I feel liberated. I feel free. Uh, I look at everything through the lens 
of a state national and what it truly means to be free. And I fully understand without a shadow of a doubt, God did make America his second covenant nation with a purpose. The purpose was to show the rest of the world that God's children are supposed to be free. They are supposed to claim dominion over the land, over the air and over the water. He wants us to live and glorify him through our acts. And what has happened is our entire system has been corrupted by a bunch of, for lack of a better word, Satanists who don't believe in glorifying God at all. In fact, it's quite the opposite. That's why and they hate our country. It's our country. That's why the communists since the day one have wanted yeah. to destroy America is because we represent a free country under God. That's it. And it, it's um, when you fully embrace that, it is the most incredibly beautiful feeling. And I have to say, you know, I, I was very blessed. I knew Dr. Zelenko, Zev, um, right after President Trump read his letter about hydroxychloroquine on the podium on March 20th. I was able to track down Dr. Zelenko through a mutual friend. It just so it was a very uncanny, divine uh, intervention, so to speak. And Zev and I became very good friends in a very private fashion. I didn't laud our friendship publicly, but he did come on from time to time and interview and so on. And you know, I, I learned a lot from him, not because he was spouting off the Torah or, or Bible passages or what have you. It was because he was truly spiritually aligned with our Creator, and he agreed there is only one creator. We all come from one creator. And when you really internalize what that means and you find that peace and you start to apply it towards the founding father's documents and that they value the relationship between God's children and, and the creator, and they invoke the word creator four times in our founding father's documents, and you embrace that and you start to see the world through the justice of God and not the justice of a government that extends privileges at the expense of liabilities that are all underfunded at this point. We now know how in debt we are with fake money. Yeah. Um, when you embrace it from that angle and that perspective and that lens, it is the most liberating feeling ever. So I don't fear what the FBI is doing to President Trump. I look at it as that is an excellent example to prove that God is, is moving right now because he's using these demons to expose themselves and they cannot help but continue to expose themselves. And they've strayed so far from the founding fathers' principles of our country and what our freedoms were supposed to be and what they're not right now, that to me, this is the ultimate lesson in, in the Bible. And I find it absolutely a spiritual journey like none other I've been on before. And I've never felt closer and more aligned with our creator than I do right now. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity, and I'm very grateful that I got a phone call from a guy by the name of Bobby Lawrence back in January of 2021, right after J6, as a matter of fact. So can you describe Bobby, and because I know he's been a key figure in this movement, and so describe that phone call and what happened from there. <laughs> well, I I spent about 20 days in D.C., and I'd been there since uh, January 3rd and went through the uh, through the uh, inauguration or and it was snowing that day, by the way, by my count, as, a, as my Facebook video was still a test. There was big snowflakes right outside the Supreme Court where I was standing. Um, and uh, I got a phone call from Bobby, probably I think it was the day after I got back. It was January, it was actually January 22nd, two days after I got back. And he said, Anne, and you have to understand, I've known Bobby since 2017 when he was running for U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania. And uh, he was asked to step aside, even though he was 10 points, 10 points up uh, over Lou Barada, who would now become the U.S. Senator. Um, he was asked to step aside. There would be something for him coming to do. So he told me the story about a gentleman named David Strait who contacted him and explained everything that we're talking about right now, but in a lot more detail, because this is not a story that can be told in a process that can be consumed in a one and a half hour podcast. It's just vast, more vast than that, and frankly, far more fascinating than what we can detail here. But Bobby called me and started to go through this in about a three hour phone call. And things that he was telling me, I said, you know, that's a piece of the puzzle I hadn't actually considered. That makes sense. That makes sense. I said, you know what, Bobby? Because I've been doing this for about, I don't know, five or six years, I've had a lot of people come to me with the things that can be too good to be true. And I did work for James O'Keefe, so I'm trying to be a little bit more skeptical over here. Let me, let me do some reading on this. Well, as you know, doing a show regularly, it's difficult to find time to, to drill on a topic of this magnitude in any um, short amount of time. So it took me a few months. And then I contacted Bobby later on in the spring. And I said, all right, tell me more. And by July, I had filled out my freedom bundle, had everything notarized, mailed off to the president, the secretary of state, the attorney general, and so on and so forth. And because we moved out of where we were living in Las Vegas for about nine months of purgatory, I call it, back to Florida, it wasn't until December before I finally filed my freedom bundle. And then by May, got my appointment at the passport agency 
because the first month of this, the first few months of this year were very, very busy traveling for me between speaking engagements and shows, et cetera. So it took me a longer period of time than it would take most. But I have to tell you, I'm glad I went that route because it allowed me to really absorb and be very skeptical and ask a lot of questions to make sure this isn't some conspiracy theory. But along the way, I've learned two and a half, actually 3 million people now in the United States last year alone have actually gone through this process and it is snowballing. 3 million. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's Mm -hmm. incredible. Does this affect your ability to vote for a federal election or a statewide election? That's a great question. So as you recall, in the beginning, we were talking about electors and then the 14th Amendment became about voting. And then the women's suffrage, you know, they made... As always, the establishment will make a big do ado about something that's really not to your benefit, right? They always make it sound better than it is. Um, Inflationary Reduction Act. Gee, Seth, do you think the new Inflationary Reduction Act is going to actually cost you less in your wallet or more? Exactly. More, right. of course. It's all, everything is always a misnomer, uh, an opposite effect. So as a state national, you go back to being an elector. And you need to change. I've actually gone to the supervisor of elections office and I filled out the paperwork to change my status so that I no longer vote. I'm an elector. And at the moment, because we moved again back to Florida and we'd sold our other house, I don't own property. So my elector weight is one versus when I become a property owner, it'll have the weight of four. Um, There is a difference between being an elector and a voter. Um, I have elect of, of the people, by the people, for the people. Um, and I, standing here on the on the law of the land, am looking to restore the Republic of Florida. We've already seen this happen in Texas. The Republic of Texas has actually been assembled and stood up. They have a governor. They have an attorney general known as the council general. And they have people that actually meet on a regular basis. Uh, they're actually getting funding now. They're, Missouri has created a republic. I believe Oklahoma is going. California is in the process. And so I've been asked by others to you know get busy down here in Florida. And I fully intend to try and be elected if if the, the good folks of Florida, this nationals down here will have me. I'll engage in the process. So I'm, I'm actually very excited about the restoration of the fundamentals of our country, how we were founded. And I'm interested in talking with people like Governor DeSantis to let him know you're doing a great job, Gov. But you know what? You can actually expedite this process through an executive order. You can terminate the state of Florida and you can ret- restore us to a republic today if you want to. It's that simple. So, and then we, the people can elect you again as governor, which I'm sure we would have no problem doing because he's done such a fantastic job. So again, it's transition, but it, it's a necessary transition and hopefully it's going to be less bloody this time. I guess I certainly hope so. If, if someone watching wants to explore this for themselves, what resources would you point them to if, if they're going to go through the same process? Well, you know, that's, again, there's wonderful, there's a lot of different people that have a lot of wonderful resources out there. I wish I could say there's one uh, entity that you should absolutely go to. And if I was going to point to one only, it would be Bobby Lawrence's Telegram room. I do know that he's um, going to be embellishing on his website to create it more of a university style setting. Um, I believe he's recently got funding to start doing that. Uh, because he is doing seminars every weekend, as is David Strait, and thousands upon thousands of people every week are going through this process and reclaiming their status, correcting their status, and and claiming jurisdiction for their lives all over again. But I would say go to Bobby Lawrence's Telegram room, which is Bobby Lawrence underscore seventeen seventy six. So t dot me, Bobby Lawrence underscore seventeen seventy six. And I'll share that on my Telegram as well, because I, I, I just followed him once I saw that in your email. And also, I'll make sure to share your Telegram channel. And can you just tell us just quickly where we can find you? Because I know you have a fantastic show, Steel Truth, but where can people find well, you if they want to watch you? Actually, Steel Truth is no more. We actually shut that down. Did you? Uh, when Dr. Yeah, uh, right after Dr. Zelenko contacted me, uh, we shut down Steel Truth and Dr. Zelenko had asked me to co-chair his foundation. This was in the last few weeks of his life. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was with a you know a heavy heart I took that responsibility along with Kevin Jenkins because uh, his legacy is incredible and what uh, he wants to see happen we are implementing and I'm very excited about it, very very excited in fact uh, we're actually going to be able to get our hands dirty build some clay and and make things happen with some very interesting people that want to see this world move forward and away from this calamity that the World Economic Forum and their uh, puppets like Joe Biden and Soros and all these people will have us believe we need to endure. We don't. We can create, you know, a parallel universe, and we're going to do that. So 
you can find me now. Uh, I'm on Brighty on TV, one o'clock every day live on the Zelenko Report. And then you can find us. Uh, I also have a website, which is at zfreedomfoundation.com. And of course, my social media is at Ann Vandersteel everywhere. You can find me on, on uh, Gab, on uh, Getter, on Truth, on Telegram. It's at Ann Vandersteel Truth on uh, Telegram. And I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but yeah, I'm everywhere at Ann Vandersteel. Oh, okay, good. So I want to pull up a website that you had shared with me, which is where I went to find some information. This was just America's Assembly. So it's America's hyphen assembly. Let me see what the URL is, dot com. So right. is, this, is this a good place to go? Like if someone wants it to is. do this on their own? It, it is. It's it, it's a really good uh, place for, it's very well organized. It's one of the reasons I like it. They offer a lot of very good organized information and on the, um, they've got documents that you can look at um, so that you can get very familiar with the history of our country. Uh, I, I have, I, they actually hold Zoom calls twice a week, Tuesday nights and Thursday nights. And so depending on the level of your comprehension, some of those Zoom calls may or may not be over your head, but there's, I think Tuesday is the more complex one and Thursday is more of the beginner one, but uh, it's a wonderful place to go. But I have to say Bobby Lawrence's Telegram channel is bar none, in my personal opinion, the best place to start. Why? Because not only does he ask you to go very back to the very beginning of his Telegram channel for the people that know nothing about from which I'm talking, and start there and read and watch everything. He has moderators that are engaged with that Telegram channel connected to a chat room. And it's a 1776 chat, I think it is. Um, it's connected, so it's not too difficult to find. But you get great engagement. And the mods are phenomenal. My my whole process was facilitated by one of his moderators, Sarah, who was phenomenal. And she helped me get... She was my sort of my check and balance. We did paperwork together. She reviewed it, sent it back, fix this, do that. So it was it was facilitated beautifully. I have to say, I was very pleased. And you just learn constant nuggets. He's always dropping nuggets, and it's these pearls that stop you to go, "Wow!" It's another dot connected. So I highly encourage people to go there. So here's a question from this is from Aunt Sue Nominee, who is, she actually donated through Rumble and asked a really good question. I wanted to bring up before we get to the more official Q and A. And she says, can a person still hold certain licenses, such as doctor, nurse, realtor, insurance agent, hairdresser, etc.? You can, you absolutely can, but you you have to remember, um, and that's your when you're in that position. Obviously, it's a commercial license. So, like an Uber driver, you would want a driver's license if you are an Uber driver because you are operating under commerce. So that is fine to do. Um, but know this: paying taxes around that is is a tax relationship between a commercial entity and a commercial entity. You're doing business in commerce. That is taxable, but the free people itself. Are not so you always need to know where you stand. Okay, you're not going to offer your hairdresser license um, to to be a, a point of reference for you at a, at an airport, right? So I show them my passport because right here on the back of my passport it tells you this is valid for domestic air travel, international land and sea travel. So you see, they're even using the language of travel. I am traveling. I'm not commercially. Uh, doing anything. I'm actually doing travel. So the, the, it's the linguistics you've kind of got to wrap your head around. But yes, you can still do that. Now, I had one, one question before before we, we've got about five minutes left before we jump over to Rise TV only where we're going to get into the whole tax issue and how basically from what I understand that when you make this transition over as to a state national, you're no longer required to pay the IRS taxes, which is, that's going to be a really fun topic to dig into, but it's what I want to do, especially with these 87,000 new IRS agents in the way, maybe they're at home watching Man in America, just waiting to come after us. But we'll get into that over on Rise TV. But one question I had, and this is something that was amazing. I was reading through the documents that you had sent me and in talking about the act of 1871 and that process. And this was the first time I'd heard this, that basically Lincoln was losing in the civil war. And he had to go to the Vatican to basically to borrow gold, enough gold to fund the remainder of the war, to win mm -hmm. the war. And then after the war, he was unable to service that loan. He was unable to repay that gold. And there, then a Rothschild bank agent was the person that pulled the trigger in the theater the assassinated Lincoln. And as collateral, the Vatican basically seized this incorporation of the United States as collateral because Lincoln couldn't pay back the goal. And it sounds like something out of a like an old school Bond movie, but is, is that all real? Did that really happen? Oh, 
Well, when you think about the IRS is a foreign corporation and it's chartered by the United Nations and the money that is collected doesn't go to the United States Treasury of the people, by the people, for the people, but it's actually sent to the International Monetary Fund. You can start to understand, you know, the trilogy of, of evil. You've had the Vatican, you've had the city of London, and you have the muscle, the military in Washington, D.C. All entities that stand on their own, all corporations, uh, as we now know, walls in that, and the Vatican's and walls around a lot of the uh, buildings in D.C., this is, in fact, should be, a, you should recognize them as public enemy, number one. They're not here to make sure you're free and your rights are protected. They're there to make sure you are servicing them and keeping them in the style to which they've become accustomed. And that is what we are seeing happening, playing out right now in this ridiculous uh, you know, Inflationary Reduction Act, which is nothing but a way to rape and pillage and install 87,000 IRS agents that, by the way, Seth, they will come after us just because we're conservative and they will go through everything and they will find a way, probably not too dissimilarly than the FBI going into President Trump's beautiful home in Palm Beach to manufacture some evidence so they can indict and take whatever they want and make your life to the point where you cannot continue on doing what you're doing. Um, I'd like to think that um, it's because of people like you and myself and many others that are watching you today that they have said, you know what? It's not about my personal belongings anymore. It's about my personal freedom and glorifying God who gave me that freedom. It starts right back there in the Bible. Seth, if we are not glorifying that which gave us our freedom, then really what we're doing is we're glorifying um, the, the devil. And if we're holding on to things that are inconsequential and not you know, lifting up those around us that are, we're glorifying the devil. So if, if you, again, the spiritual journey is vast and I can always bring it back to that which is what gives me so much peace in all of this. But again, the IRS, foreign corporation, your money is not going back into the treasury of we the people. It's going right out the door into the IMF and the World Bank. So it's almost as if our country has been seized by this Luciferian cult, and we were duped into believing that it was legitimate for a very, very long time because they controlled all channels of communication. That's but right. especially with Trump in 2016, point, coming back in, pointing out the fake news, everything, there's been this mass awakening, a great awakening, some might call it, of people who are realizing this and seeing through it and now rejecting it. They're turning off the TV. They're getting involved in the local school boards. They're even stepping away from the corporation of the United States, which is their me mechanism of controlling us, taxing us, robbing us, everything. So there's we're, we're experiencing a big shift right now. And like what you mentioned with, with the FBI rating Trump's uh, Mar-a-Lago, to me, that's just an indicator that they are backed into a corner. Because you're even having, you know, Cuomo's coming out, Andrew Young is coming out, people, even, you know, very uh, liberal folks are coming out and saying this is a, an obvious overstepping of justice. And so they're, they're, it's like a, they're a rattlesnake backed into a corner and they're going to bite anything they can, including themselves, to try to save themselves. But I think that their days are numbered. I couldn't agree more. And I, I'm actually enjoying watching them become so completely volatile, violent in a sense, um, outlandish. Uh, you know, sending more money over to Ukraine at this point when Zelensky has been on TV basically saying, you know, our troops are quitting, um, the Russians are beating us. I mean, this is, and, and of course, the, the news that's coming out now very clearly is that Putin was running an operation over there, yet we continue to fund something that has been killing people in Ukraine of Russian descent. Now that same thing that we funded has killed millions of people around the world. It's the COVID-19 bioweapon. So the United States government has been quite complicit along with other world governments to perpetrate crimes against humanity. And it becomes more about we the people, Democrat, Republican, independent, black, white, green, purple, pink, I don't care, versus this tyrannical cabal that wants nothing to do with upholding and protecting our freedoms. They have everything to do with protecting their personal um, ideologies as well as their wallets and their lifestyle. And it's, uh, it's about high time that humanity recognizes that age old problem of the king and the serf has got to end. God didn't want that, which is the reason why he created the second covenant nation to get us away from that model of living, to, pr to put us right here in America to be free and to stand up another government that was consented by foreign of the people, not the crown. Yeah, and what an amazing time to be alive. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, so, so we're gonna, folks, we're now gonna head over just to Rise TV. We're gonna do a Q&A. So if you have any questions about this process, when I first talked to Ann about this, I had about a million questions and, and thankfully I had you one-on-one -on -one and so I could kind of hone in on you and get those answered. But if you want to ask any questions at all, 
please come join us. We're also going to talk about the tax implications of this, even the concept that you can go back and request every cent that has been taken from you, you know, taxed out of your pocket since you were born, which is incredible. So we're going to discuss this over on Rise TV. If you want to come join us in the description below the video is a link for a free trial. And it's look, it's not just like you're paying to, well, actually it's a free trial, but Rise TV, our mission is to get information out like this out there. And as you can see, the majority of this interview has been on the public free platform, which is my goal to get as much content out there as possible. But because YouTube, all the other social media, they're completely demonetizing. They're making it so hard for people like Ann and myself to, to make it and to have an audience to tell the truth to. By supporting us on Rise TV, you're really helping this information to reach the right people. And you're really funding a Patriot-owned and driven uh, project. So I hope you can come join us. We're going to continue this conversation. Thank you. And it, look, and if you can't join us, you still want to help out, please share the video. And Right, that's one of the biggest things you can do is just share the video with your friends and family and make sure that you're also subscribing to the Man in America podcast. The links are in the description below the video. And if you're on there, make sure you give me a five star because those five star ratings really help the podcast to reach more people. So, um, and also a quick reminder is if you're following me on Telegram, which if you're not, you should be, I will share Anne's contact information where you can follow her on Telegram after the show. So, Dom, you can go ahead and cut the public feed, and we'll head over to Rise TV only and get into the, I would say, the more interesting part of this discussion, which really is what piqued <laughs> my interest, because I'm sick and tired of having my tax dollar money go over to criminal rings in Ukraine or gender exactly. studies in Pakistan or anything like that. Exactly. Thank you. Absolutely. So, okay, let's, I, th I, th we're, I think all of our, our feeds are cut publicly now, so we can dig into this stuff. So in doing this, 